time. Oh, this seems really thin. I hope it goes pretty quick. Okay, board, um, board member Belknap, Belknap, you chair, so we'll call you chair Belknap. Will you please report on the standard and assessment? Okay, 3.1, approval of the previous minutes was unanimous. 3.2, digital teaching and learning qualified grants 277922. Um, Sarah just continues to bring us an update and reports of things that are going well, and we've also asked for things that maybe aren't. She highlighted San Juan Davis, um, you Ed Chat and um, Digital Teaching and Learning Mentors, which is kind of a cool thing that the, um, those are, that have been in the program now for a year are helping to mentor those who are now signing up. And I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, 3.3, um, 2018 new plan approval for Digital Teaching and Learning Qualified Grants. She presented the new plans. Um, there were 11 that submitted, two are to receive their grants. Um, like Channing Hall's getting a little more than $8,000, Venture Academy um, almost 11,000, and Open Classroom was presented to have a planning grant, which is $5,000. Uh, Member Gravit approved um, the plans for Channing Hall and Venture Academy, and the planning grant for Open Classroom, the vote was unanimous. The committee moves that the board approve the full plans for Channing Hall and Venture Academy, and the planning grant for Open Classroom. Okay, the motion before the board is the board approved the full plans of Channing Hall and Venture Academy and the plan grant for open classroom. Any discussion to the moment to the motion? Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Voting was unanimous. 3.4, um, 277404 requirements for assessments of student achievement, the standard test as administration and testing testing ethics policy and the parental exclusion form. There are three different pieces to this. Um, we talked over, first of all, the rule 404. I know that a lot of you have gotten some information on this, and so I'm going. if you can join, if you're going to have questions, if you can look at the rule, first of all, starting on line 222, we added as one of the multiple lines of evidence where it's talking about using SAGE in the... Um, how, to, so students can take advanced courses as one of the lines of evidence. On line 227, we added the word or at the end. Line 228, um, B, because the student was exempted from taking a state required assessment. That has to do with because if they were exempted from taking the statewide assessment that they can't preclude them from getting into honor classes because even though they were exempt from it, they'll have to use other measures to measure that student. Um, line 279 at the beginning of the sentence add, except as provided in subsection 4B, meaning that they, um, oh, Tiffany, I forgot. That, which one is that? Sorry. Oh. Except it's providing 4B, if that's that oh, top that's line. that's the one day prior. Oh, okay, the yeah. one day prior, okay. An LEA may allow a parent to exempt a student from taking a state required assessment less than one day prior to the beginning of the assessment upon parental ex request. This actually came up by Jenny because she really had a student come and there was a problem. And then on line 284, change B to C to clean it up. Um, Member Warmer, Warner motion that we accept Rule 277404 as amended on first reading. The motion was unanimous. Okay. So I know that's only part way through, but we have three different motions, Chair. I know, but, this, but according to this, it shows that we have only two. Oh, I, yeah, we did only have two. So that, can we do the first one now? Okay, the first, one, the first one that you have in here is the committee moves that the board approve R277-404 revision two on second reading. So that is a motion before the board. Um, Chair Belknap, is that correct? Okay. So motion before the board is that the board approve R277-404 revision two on second reading. Any discussion to the motion? Um, Vice Chair Ellis. Sorry, I am trying to pull up, I'm, I pulled up the doc. Can you remind me what lines the um, AP provision is on? I, I think that might be the 222. Okay, so um, I had um, Alpine School Board member Wendy Hart have had a concern that, and, and, and I echo this based on a conversation I had last week with uh, district personnel in Wasatch County that 
all the smart kids are the ones opting out. And so I am concerned that this, this move is to incentivize them not to opt out, which I can understand why they would want to um, do that, but at the same time, um, even though you're saying they cannot prohibit them from taking an AP class, are, how are we assured that they will not fill up the class with SAGE um, people, students first? Is there some language that we can put in there to make sure that they, they can't exclude them, but what if they say, oh, it's full because they considered those students first? Does that make sense? My question, and I don't, I, and I want to make sure we put some language in there to protect that from happening because that would become an incentive or a reward. Chair, can I? Board Member Melman. Thank you. Um, with our change in schedule, um, this is going to give us almost two months to look at this and to work on this. If you're willing, be, and and if it's going to come back on consent, but we'll corrective language. Are you okay with that? Okay. And then you can help me with that. Any further comments? Board Member Reby? I received quite a few emails about this as well. Um, online 2225. At 225, it says an LEA may not prohibit a student from enrolling in an honors class, and it also says an LEA may consider. Um, we talk a lot about local control here, <clears throat> and we want to give local control back to our LEAs. I think this does give local control to our LEAs. So um, as I've answered these questions to my constituents and received back, we are looking to give local control to our LEAs. So you could help me too. Okay, any further comment? I'll repeat the motion. The motion before the board is the board approve R277-404 revision two on second reading. Seeing no further comment, let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. Voting was unanimous. Please continue. Okay, and Jared Wright presented an updated parental exclusion form. One, um, we've had several questions. One was on the formative assessment um, and SAGE. There is no formative assessment any longer. It's given in the benchmark and students can still opt out of those. Um, Member Gravett motion to approve the opt-out form with the addition of the sentence regarding SAGE formative at the bottom. And if you'll note that, if you'll see it, it says SAGE formative is no longer available to give so that parents will know that it's not there. So they don't need to opt out. Okay. <clears throat> From the committee, the motion that came is that the board approved the updated parental exclusion form for the 2017-18 school year. Is that correct, Chair? No. Any discussion to the motion? Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? Voting was unanimous. Okay, so that one's ready to go. And then we did have a discussion on the standard test administration and testing ethics manual. There's been a lot of progress done on it, but it is not ready. It, it needed some more cleanup. So we're just assuming that districts are going to continue to use that, that this year's standard and assessment um, testing ethics manual and that this will be updated. It may be updated in a couple of months, but they won't have to go back. We'll make it effective for next year. So 3.5, we had a report on underage drinking prevention advisory from HB 442. Um, Lynette Sheesh and Linda Sosi Jensen presented information from the 2017 session on 442 on the Drinking Prevention Advisory Council. Um, in here, we need to have two board members. And so we ask board member Warner if she would request from the leadership to appoint two members to this. So when you have your leadership meeting um, and then also um, Dr. Dixon is supposed to appoint a designee as well. And the committee requested that council report back to the committee after each one of their meetings. So that we know what's going on with that. There is no motion. 3.6 centennial. One, one second, quick question. Question. Board member question. Who is this an advisory committee in statute? That's a lot of board members or a lot of people from us that are it, going on this the, advisory committee. Statute. Who else is on the yeah, um, this advisory committee? It's written in the statute. It's in the statute. Four, four, two, line um, 4443. Two members of the State Board of Education appointed by the chair of the State Board of Education. 
of education. And then Dr. Dixon's appointing someone too? And it says, and so there's, that's me. there's three of us on there? And there's five others. Wow. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I'll, I'll three, address that later. Okay, 3.6, Centennial Scholarship Application and Deferral Explanation Documents. This scholarship has already been deferred, but there wasn't any explanation as to why it was deferred. So in Rule 277703, there's specific language from the changes from SB 64, um, but in the document, there's only one change in the form, and that, let me see what it was. Oh, and that is where a student marks, I am deferring my scholarship. There, there was no place to check that on the form. Um, member um, Cummings, Cummins approved a motion to approve the updated application in the supplemental document, and the vote was unanimous. The committee moves that the board approve the updated Centennial Scholarship application and the deferral explanation document. The motion before the board is the board approve the updated, updated Centennial Scholarship application and the deferral explanation document. Any discussion? To the motion. Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed? Voting was unanimous. Okay, 3.7, parent guardian consent form for human sexuality instruction. Um, Jody Kaufman presented an updated um, parent guardian consent form for human sexuality instruction. This form is an opt-in form. It, According to Board Rule 277474, this includes the only piece that was changed on this form is to, to so that it matches statute. And now it says the advocacy of premarital and extramarital sexual activities. That's, and, and it's taken out homosexuality. And, and uh, the bottom. And there was a oh, yeah, we did one change at the bottom, too. Where was it? Oh, the last sentence of option four on the parental um, consent form be removed as it's unnecessary and does not contain accurate information. So it's also been removed. Uh huh. Option four, the last sentence, because it actually dealt with telling parents what to do. Yeah. So we took that out. Um, Member Stokes motion to approve the parent guardian consent form for human sexuality instruction with the amendment requested by the committee and the motion was unanimous. The committee moves that the board approve the updated parent guardian consent form for human sexuality instruction. Okay. <clears throat> the motion before the board is to approve the updated parent guardian consent form for human sexuality instruction. Any discussion to the motion? Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Voting was unanimous. Please continue. Okay, 3.8. The CTE approved programs um, for year eight, school year 18-19. Talia Long Longhurst presented the CTE programs, just the pathways. And the pathways are what we've seen, that one-page sheet that now it, it, um, it that's what we're approving, and it actually, in, in statute, no, in rule, it tells her to put it on the consent calendar, so she was doing exactly what she thought she was supposed to do. Um, I think also, before we vote on this, I think for some clarity's sake, there are 300 classes taught in CTE. We have never had those come, the standards come before us for approval before. We now are working on a process for all CTE classes to come before us for approval with a little bit different process than our 12 step because, um, what is it called? The people out in the world, industry drives what's, what sometimes the instruction is in that class. So should I do the motion first and then let? Um, before we let, get to the motion, I saw a light come on, I believe it. Board Member Hanson, do you have a question before the motion? I, I do have a question. Just um, somebody had mentioned to me that there were are different pathways this time than what we've had before. And so can you kind of tell us which ones those are? There was one do different you know? one on that. There, they might have different names, but they're still the same pathways. They, they might have an umbrella name that's different, but the courses leading to them are the so same. So what's the new one? Uh, there was one, I think, Talia's going to have to help me, but I think it was aeronautics, wasn't it? So, um, hang on one sec. Board, does board member Stokes, do you have an answer have some clarifying, to the question? Yeah, yes. I can clarify this. They they changed the, um, they gr started grouping the pathways so that people in the industry 
could understand them. So they did oh. they did them in groupings. So and they've added actually education as a pathway uh, going into education. That's the one that was added and changed. But it was it was they've tried to group them in industry standard language so kids knew what they were doing and parents. So this is kind of an overview category um, and the the all the classes will come back in the future. Okay. That, Good. That's a, someone mentioned to me about that there was a new one, and that I think is probably the education one. Yeah. Thank you, Board Member Stokes, for that fine explanation. So the motion, the com committee, oh, wait a minute. The committee moves that the board approve the CTE path programs or the pathways list for 2018-19 school year. Member Gravett, oh, by the way, gave that, and it was unanimous. Okay. Motion before the board is the board approve the CTE programs pathways list for the 2018-19 school year. Any discussion to the motion? Seeing none, let's vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Voting is unanimous. 3.9, corrective action on internal and external audits. Kevin John presented the audit for Jordan School District, and, and we actually asked him, he's an auditor here, and we just asked him to go over the findings. There were 19 findings. Jordan has submitted corrective action, and there's two that are still in the works to be done. Um, but my question was, how do we know they've done this just because this paper says they do? And so I've asked our our um, staff to go back and verify when they say we've created a policy to for corrective actions I want them to show them the policy and so they're going to bring that back and we're going to have Jordan School District come back and then um, we also Kevin presented about the dual immersion program and the scope of the audit covered from July 2013 to July 17 and there were six findings and the USB has submitted corrective action plan in response to the audit report. So we did have a motion to have a representative from Jordan School District come to the October board meeting and be available to answer questions regarding the audit. Does that conclude your report? Uh, amen. Okay, that, thank you. We're hustling right along here.